Hey y'all, welcome back to the trailer park. If you're new here, my name is Marina. Today, I'm going to take you guys along with me to show you the daily routine I've been doing to make sure that my house stays tidy after doing that huge declutter series. I know I talk about that series a lot. I know I refer back to it a lot, but I'm telling you guys, it's changed my life and this is how I've been able to upkeep it. First, I get dressed. Not always to the shoes, not always in actual clothes, but I change from the clothes I slept in to the clothes that I'm ready to tackle the day in, even if it's pajamas. I'm weak. I have nighttime pajamas and daytime pajamas and changing them every day helps me to make sure I'm changing my clothes every day because two years ago it was not anything out of the normal for me to be in the same pajamas for seven days in a row. It's not something I'm proud of but it's something I'm always honest about because I know I'm not the only one that struggles with that or has struggled with that and I want to make sure that you know if you do struggle with that. It might not be normal considered to the regular people <laughs> but there is a handful of us out here who do struggle with things like that and it's okay you're in good company immediately the next thing i've been doing is tackling my bed and making sure it's tidy not perfect but tidy i like seeing it made and it makes me motivated when i walk through here to use the bathroom which i do 9500 times a day <laughs> whenever i see my bed is made and it's like all nice and tucked in and everything like i said there's wrinkles everywhere y'all this is not boot camp approved but <laughs> it is made which is a big old step from what it used to be which is torn up <laughs> I lay my night clothes out because I don't wash them after one use. I feel like that's just a waste of water and a waste of laundry. I was about to call it a dish detergent, laundry detergent. So I usually wear the same pajamas three nights in a row. That may be gross, but it's it's frugal. <laughs> it's frugal, y'all. One of you guys did give me the hack, though, that instead of folding it up and leaving it on my dresser, to fold it up and put it under my pillow to kind of hide it. And I like that hack, so I've been doing that lately, too. I haven't been using a whole lot of chemicals, but I have a ton of fabric spray, scented fabric spray to use up. So I always spray down my bed, and then I light a candle to help with the ambiance. I always gotta use the bathroom then, because, you know, toilet schedule. So my first use of the bathroom, okay, my first use of the bathroom, after I get done, I swish and swap. And if that sounds familiar, it's because it's a thing that Fly Lady says. I loosely follow the Fly Lady method, the Fly Lady routines. I say loosely because her routines don't work to a T for me. I have to kind of modify them. She does encourage you to do just that though. She encourages you to modify it to work for you. So that's what I've been doing. So I have to give her credit because her routine is the foundation to my routine. I also got to give her credit because she's the only person alive who can get me to eat breakfast. So thank you, Fly Lady, for getting me to eat the most important meal of the day. I then emptied the dishwasher. So I run my dishwasher at night, which is something I used to never do, but I do now after dinner. I pop my dishes in the dishwasher, turn it on, go to bed, forget about it in the morning, wake up, come in here and unload my first load of dishes. I usually have two to three loads of dishes a day because there are so many of us in here, but running it at night really helps to keep the dishes at bay so that my sink isn't overflowing in the middle of the day with dirty dishes. However, this is real life, so you will see that days like today, they're an exception. Sometimes things happen. Sometimes your sink gets full when you don't want it to, and that's okay. We don't cry over dirty dishes. I don't know about you, but crying over dirty dishes does not sound like a fun time to me. <laughs> On a normal day, I don't have to do this next step. Next on my list is doing a load of laundry. I'm gonna have to switch it up a little bit. Because, um, <laughs> I have maybe a third of a load of laundry to do. Um, who am I? I mean, I'm blown away. I have some in the dryer to fold, so I do need to do that. Later on in the day, a part of the routine is switching over and like revising the laundry, I guess you could say rebooting the laundry, I think she says. So I'll reboot the laundry and fold and put all that stuff away when I get to that part of my daily routine. Let me show you the part that I'm struggling with though. If I get one thing going good, I fall back on another thing. I'm trying to ride the fence constantly. But if you ask me, it's like riding a bull. I'm thrown everywhere. <laughs> I'm th I should be an expert bull rider by now, but I am not. I'm thrown everywhere. This is what I've been struggling with since getting caught up with my laundry. Because I took the day yesterday to get caught up on my laundry and then I went live after dinner, right after dinner. So I didn't do dinner dishes. So I've got dinner dishes, breakfast dishes and early lunch dishes in this sink. This is all the dishes I have to do. The good thing is they're not really dirty. Um, there's just a lot of them. So instead of doing the load of laundry, like my normal routine would be, since I don't have any laundry, I'm just going to tackle this and consider this a load of laundry basically. Cause I, I don't have a place to check this off in my routine cause this is supposed to already be done like last night. So that was a fail on yesterday's routine. We're not gonna allow it to be a fail on today's routine though. We're just gonna tackle the daggone thing and get it done. Cause that's all we can do. I'm not gonna beat myself up over the sink of dishes when my house looks like this. 
cleaner than it's ever been. I'm not gonna beat myself up about dishes over that. You shouldn't beat yourself up over dishes anyway. Dishes ain't nothing to be beat up over. So I don't care if your house is as dirty as a house on the episode of Hoarders, don't beat yourself up over things that you can fix. I say that all the time, but I'll say it one more time for those of you in the back that didn't really hear me last time. We don't cry and we don't beat ourselves up over things that we can fix, over household things. We cry, we shouldn't really beat ourselves up. <laughs> we cry over mistakes that we can't fix, words that are said that we can't take back, things that are done to others that we can't take back. That's the things that we have the right to cry over. Dishes, mm -mm, they ain't worth your tears. I just want you to tap into some of that mama energy and get it done. The hack that I've been learning is when I don't wanna do something, I think of my kids. My kids can get me to do anything in, on this earth, anything. So when I got the strength for me to do it for me, I do it for them. Whenever you see your dishes, you picture your kids and you're like, man, they really need something to eat on. There's no way you can tell yourself no. There's no way you can talk yourself out of that task. You're gonna do it because you're, you're the mama. That's been my hack as of lately and it's been working. I mean, that's not a new thing. I've done that you know, often, but I've really been putting that into motion the past little bit and it's really been helping me get stuff done that I don't have the motivation to do. Because let's be honest, motivation comes and goes. I, while I do have a lot of energy, I do not have a lot of motivation. My energy is chaotic energy, it's wild energy, it's not productive energy. Until I make it productive energy, which is what I'm doing now. Got my load in the dishwasher. Now I gotta work on the stuff I need to hand wash. I don't ever put my pots in the dishwasher. Sometimes Shane does when he forgets, but I don't ever, ever, ever put my pots in the dishwasher. You guys taught me that a long time ago. I have noticed it has definitely preserved my pots way better than the old ones. It could be due to the quality, but I do give the credit to not putting them to the dishwasher because the silicone isn't peeling off, nothing. Like they're perfect, they're just like I bought them. So I don't put these or my nice stainless steel pots in the dishwasher, which my dishwasher was completely full anyway, but even if it hadn't have been, I would have still hand washed these. I wanted a set of pans, like nice pans for so long, I'm not going to risk ruining them just because I don't wanna wash them by hand, we're gonna wash them by hand.
because I do homeschool and I do what you would consider work from home, those are two things that take up a majority of my day. So that's why I've got to kind of put this routine in places it will fit within my schedule. So usually as soon as I get done with the morning routine, I start on the kids' school. I do two hours of my work with them and then the rest of the school day is independent work from them because they do the ace paces, which encourages the children to do independent work and actually score their own work. I do go in behind them and give it a mama score. And I also have to do a separate scoring for our records and everything, but a majority of their work is at least 60% of independent work. So that really helps me have those openings throughout my day where I can really tackle stuff. I've just kind of had to work with the time that I have, even when it's split up and kind of just do what I can in little increments of time, but it's been working for me lately. That's the good thing about the ACE Paces is it does encourage independent learning, independent scoring, independent everything. It's flawed in a lot of ways and outdated in a lot of ways, but it does encourage them to learn independently, which really helps them with their critical thinking when it comes to answering problems and problem solving. So I really like that curriculum as far as that goes. It is definitely outdated. <laughs> and Colton told me the other day, he said this, this pace will make you feel like you need to go outside in the trailer park and build an altar mama. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, uh, I get that. As far as the core subjects go, though, they are really good. We do implement a lot of other things into our homeschooling box of goodies, as I call it. We're always pulling from everything. We also do things like story of the world. We've also done stuff like spelling you see, but we always stick with the ace paces being the foundation of our curriculum because we have been on them for so long and we have used them. My kids are comfortable with them. And Shane and I both used them as kids. Shane actually graduated with them. The way I've been able to be so consistent and keep my homeschooling simple is I don't try to fix stuff that ain't broken. I just go with what we're used to and I keep it that way. It's a very simplified way of homeschooling. I don't go and do any fancy thing. We just follow our curriculum to a T and add a few things here and there and that's it. I always refer back to my planner because I'm constantly having, what is it? What's it called? I was about to call it a fart brain. It is not a fart brain. Airheaded. Is that, well, I mean, that could be a fart brain. <laughs> I'm constantly being airheaded about what I had to do. So I just kind of like touch up the little areas. This is my YouTube planner. I have four different planners. This one is my YouTube planner. I also have a homeschooling planner. I also have a homemaking planner. I also have an appointment planner. We are done with the morning routine. I'm going to start the afternoon routine here in a minute. I do got to finish up some things on my end for school today. Uh, and then I think we'll do our read aloud later in the evening because right now I really want to get on dinner and I haven't even started dinner yet We are gonna do homemade Big Macs though. I'm interested to see how that's gonna turn out I really hope it don't taste like a fart I really hope I don't traumatize Shane when it comes to Big Macs because that's one of his favorite meals ever So I might warp his taste buds a little bit <laughs> That might be a good thing though because he does eat a lot of Big Macs <laughs> I'm gonna make some sweet tea though for the kiddos. They are wanting some so bad Even though I am southern and I am a Tennessean through and through your girl does not get fancy with her sweet tea I make it in a microwave. I make it out of tea bags in a microwave <laughs> and it works and my kids love it. I literally just get a bowl, <laughs> a straight up bowl. I put three tea bags in here usually. Not the family size tea bags because that will have you time traveling. You'll be running through sound. <laughs> I just do three regular bags and I hang them out over here so that I don't, I mean this is obvious, but in case it's not obvious to somebody, don't feel bad because I didn't know this till I was like in my 20s. I just hang them out over here so I don't have to go fishing for them. Um, you know, getting your finger all in the tea and stuff, it's just not a good idea. So I, I do put tap water in mine, we ain't got worms yet, but I'm not gonna stand over here and wait for half hour while I fill it up with fridge water. So <laughs> I'm just gonna fill this up about three fourths of the way with regular water from the sink, tap water. And my theory, the microwave nukes all the bad stuff anyway and just replaces it with more bad stuff. I put this in the microwave for like five minutes. This is not the whole tea. So what I do is, <laughs> I don't have a pitcher. I don't have a tea pitcher. So what I do is, is I usually fill this up three fourths. It'll be extremely potent. Like, I mean, it'll smack you in the face. You don't want to drink it like this. But after, you know, come back here. Uh-uh, you and me going fishing in the dark. Oh, I'm counting the stars. There we go. That's probably a little bit too much, actually, um, but it'll be fine. After I microwave it, I don't touch it. I just sit it over here on the countertop, and then 
my kids will come and they'll ladle them some out. <laughs> this is how I do it, y'all. <laughs> they'll ladle some out with a ladle. I got a little black ladle over there. They'll ladle it out in their cup. For example, well, I'll show you guys. Let me put this in my microwave for five minutes and I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. Because I'm talking in circles right now. This is what it looks like. I'm going to squeeze out my bags to get all that tea out of there. That leaf water, as Shane calls it. And either I'll sweeten it right now, ladle it out, and dilute it with water in the kids' cups. Or I'll wait for the kids to do it. I'm going to do it this time because I've noticed my, my kids have been using a little bit too much sugar in their sweet tea when they do it themselves. Kind of like a quarter of an inch of sugar on the bottom of their cup. Too much. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and sweeten it now. And then we'll, the, all they'll have to do is get some ice in their cups and ladle this out and dilute it. I really can't explain how much sugar I put in this. I know y'all are going to be like, Marina, why are you showing us? You feel it. You feel it with your soul. Like, that's all that's, like, I'll know whenever it's enough. Like, that's not enough. See, I just know. But I'm running into issues because I put my sugar in this thing in the fridge and it's a solid block. I don't know what happened. But it's like a big old giant sugar cube like you'd feed a horse. A mammoth horse. Oh, well look at it. Look at it. I'm just gonna have to chisel some off the edge, I guess. <gasps> Man! Oh! <laughs> Let's try it. I know it ain't gonna be enough, but. Oh! I'm grading it! Hey, Mama! Hi, baby! What you doing? Um, I'm grading off sugar into. Sweet tea. Oh, you made sweet tea. Mm -hmm. Nice. Here's my ladle right here. I just want to stir it up a little bit and see if it's got the right consistency. Not consistency. See if it's sweetened <laughs> the right amount. Chilling your sugar until it's a cube and then grating it is actually a genius idea. I need to patent that before somebody steals that. Oh, by golly. You put popcorn on to eat on two. Yeah, put it on two. That's banging. I'm just gonna set this down here. Like so here, cause right now it's just a big old giant block. And I'm, I'm hoping when it warms up, it'll kind of disintegrate and be easier to break it up. For now, it's just gonna look like this. When I said ladle, did y'all think I was joking? Like I really, we really do ladle it out. I keep thinking to get a pitcher and I forget, and I keep forgetting every time I go get groceries or I go to the store. And like, this is not a, I've only been wanting a picture for like a month kind of thing, like three years. I have consistently forgotten to get a picture at Walmart. I saw picture frames. This doesn't need to be diluted too much because I did put more in here than I usually do, so we're just going to dilute it a little bit. Give it a stir. Jolie is my sweet tea drinker so she won't be able to tell me if it's good or if it's bad i'm supposed to be drinking water right now i'm considering this is leaf water you guys asked me how well i've been doing soda wise i've been doing phenomenal i don't drink soda i do drink sweet tea but i only have one glass a day and the rest is just plain water i'm fine tell me what's the name rate it five out of five that's good my tea drinker gave me a five out of five and my non-tea drinker Jay hates tea. He gave me a five out of five too, but she, I'm pretty sure she just did that because she loves me. You get a snack? Yeah. Hey, your popcorn supposed to be pop? Okay. <laughs> While we're waiting to start dinner, I'm going, I know what's for dinner. I just don't, I just haven't started it yet. Part of the afternoon routine is knowing what's for dinner. I know exactly what we're having for dinner. I just haven't started it yet. So before I start dinner, I want to finish a few things, but I also want to start dinner by six o'clock because I've never done this recipe before and I don't know how long it'll take. I know how long the recipe that I'll be pinning down below says it'll take, but it almost always takes me three times that long to do something. So I don't know how long it'll take me. So I want to start at least by six o'clock. So I have time to hang out with the family. It's a Friday night. 
have time to hang out with the family and then uh, do my evening routine. I want to make sure I get that down pat tonight too. I would probably already start dinner, but I'm waiting on Shane to bring some relish on his way home because I forgot we needed relish and we never have relish in the house because we don't do relish here. I'm going to do a few things though while I wait on getting dinner started. I've already drank my water. I was kidding when I said I'm drinking leaf water for the drink my water option on here. I only can have one of these skinny tumblers of sweet tea a day. That's a rule I gave myself. Otherwise, I would drink the whole thing. I, I mainly drink water. I don't even put flavoring in my water or anything right now, as of right now. I've kind of got foundered on that, so I've just been drinking ice water, sometimes with lemon in it. The things that I need to do before I start dinner, I need to declutter for 15 minutes. I know what area I'm going to do that in because I don't have any other area to do it in because my whole house is decluttered. <laughs> um, and then I need to reboot my laundry. And I'm not going to do my 15 minutes of moving in here because I do my 15 minutes of moving in the evening on my treadmill. I actually usually do 45, but tonight I'll probably only do 15 since I'm up and moving around. I try to do 45 on my editing days. So for decluttering wise, we're going to hit up my bookshelf finally. I'm going to start up here at the top of this left one and just make my way down. And declutter books that I either know I'm not going to get to read in or that I didn't like and just have hung on to. I've been trying not to do that a whole lot, but I've been doing some of it. So I'll... I'm going to go through and get rid of ones that I know I'm not going to read. I feel like I'm, I strongly feel like I'm not going to read. Or ones I just didn't like. I have been getting more into ebook reading lately. I read on my phone, on my Kindle Unlimited, 90% of the time now. I rarely actually pick up a physical book now. So, I want to eventually just get these shelves to be in books that I want to keep as kind of trophies that I really enjoyed reading. Like my Jennifer L. Armantrout series. Morganville Vampire series. I love those books. My Escape to Paradise trilogy. My Sarah J. Mass stuff. My Lisa T. Bergeron. I need to get all the physical copies of the River of Time series. I want to eventually just get this to those and not buy like standalone or novels or anything like that. Just get those on my phone to encourage a more minimalist approach to books. I would like to set my limit at at least 15. I have probably 150 books, so maybe more, maybe less. I don't know. I'm not good at gauging amounts. <laughs> I'd like to get rid of at least 15 and more if I can. This book is A Distant Melody by Sarah Sundin. It is so good. It's so good. Y'all should read it. It's about this uh, guy. He's in the Army. I think he's in the Air Force. I think he flies an airplane. He takes his last um, uh, furlough home to California before he shipped overseas. And he meets this girl named Allie. And they start to write each other back and forth. And it like... It goes into a big thing. It's so good. I haven't finished this because I didn't know it was a series until just now reading this back. This is book one's in the Wings of Glory series. It is so good. The Distant Melody by Sarah Sundin. Hey, Hi, calling me. Hi, baby. We got rid of six from this shelf so let's hope we can get rid of some more more than six on that shelf because I really want to get rid of 15 if I don't get rid of more than this on that shelf I'll have to come back over here and just pick through it some more and the moment we're off it we try so Man, that was hard. <laughs> Let me show you what I'm getting rid of. Getting rid of First Life by Gina Showalter. It's about a girl in an asylum. The reason I bought it is because it's by Gina Showalter. And I love Gina Showalter. I read her um, White Rabbit Chronicles series. It was super good. She has a little bit of YA in some of her stuff. Like, there's no in-between with Gina Showalter. She's either really, really adult or she's really, really YA. The White Rabbit Chronicles series is really, really YA. It's like teenagers and zombies. I read that years ago and I loved it. 
So I saw her name on this and I want to read it. I would keep it, but I can read it for free on the library app. So I'm not going to keep it when I can read it on the library app. Getting rid of it helps me get rid of some stuff. I'm fine with reading it on the library app. Getting rid of the Ice Planet Barbarians because <laughs> these are in the kids section at Walmart. <laughs> And somebody on TikTok told me that I would really enjoy them. And I have not touched them because I later found out what they were about. <laughs> so they've just been chilling on my bookshelf just looking at me and waiting for me to get rid of them. I love aliens, but I don't think I would like these books. When Originally, they, it was told to me that it was like an alien romance. Y'all know I love my alien romances. I love my alien romances, my vampire romances. Anything fantasy romance aside from like demons, I'm good with fantasy romance that's the one I always go to either fantasy romance or historical romance or Christian fiction those are the three and they're really really different from one another but those are the three that I usually go for this I think is um well let's read the back because I haven't even read the back before I know that these are old school books they were written forever ago but they just got their covers revised so they look really cool and they're colorful and they catch your attention. So that's also another reason I did it. I'm just going to read the back of this one because I don't know if it's the first one or not. Fall in love with an out of this world romance between between Georgie Caruthers, a human woman. Daddy's home! A human woman and Vectal, an alien from another planet in this expanded edition with bonus materials and space trilogies. Aliens. This is the space. <laughs> he knew it from back there. Um, you've been abducted by aliens. Apparently, the aliens abducted the women. Now they're having ship trouble. They're stranded with the aliens. A big blue horned alien introduces himself. He tells her that she's his mate. His chosen female. If I had the red back at Walmart, I would have put it back down. Listen, her presence is the reason his chest is purring. As Vectal helps us survive, I'm not sure he's going to want to let me go. Reading the back, I mean, I probably would have still picked it up. I was kidding about that other part. I don't know, have y'all ever read these? Because TikTok told me I would love it because I love alien and I love romances. But then somebody later came along and told me that it was really adulty. And as an adult toddler, I just, I don't, you know, I like vampires and stuff but I don't know about it. Has anybody read this? I don't know. I'm afraid to try. I, regardless I'm getting rid of them. If I want to pick it up later I'll pick it up on the library app if they have it and if not on the Kindle. I'm getting rid of Silver Kiss. I randomly found this at McKay's once and somebody on Goodreads said that it was better than Twilight and they lied. <laughs> They lied. I have a tab. You see, I have this one single tab. I only tab fly lady books. So when you see a tab on a fictional book for me, you know there's something interesting, interesting going down on that page. The forest had never left him. Tonight it echoed in him like owl cries and pine needles rustling. He marked his territory like a wolf and urinated on the back doorsteps. Do I need to say any more? Getting rid of this because I just got it because it was on sale at Books A Million. Um, it's kind of like a contemporary. I think it's about two sisters and I don't read a whole lot of contemporary that doesn't have any romance in it. So I'm getting rid of it. Getting rid of this because I don't know what it's about. I just saw it and at McKay's. It was eight bucks. Um, I think it's about a virtual rom it's like virtual romance or something. It's a college girl who hasn't dated anyone since her and her high school sweetheart broke up. So when she decides to take advantage of an expiring coupon and try out a new virtual reality dating service, it's sort of a big deal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm getting rid of these two. I have never read this series, but the covers like yelled at me to get them. So I got these and then me and Shane went to McKay's and he saw that they had the hardbacks so we went ahead and bought all four of the hardbacks at McKay's even though I've never read it before just because I like the covers. <laughs> so I'm getting rid of the paperbacks I have and I really do need to get on reading that soon. This is another contemporary. I can get this on the library app for free so I'm not gonna keep this hard copy. I picked it up because it was a dollar. I didn't realize it was about like 15, 16 year olds and like I told you guys before I don't read a whole lot of YA anymore. There are some YA that I still want to read. I want to read the Alienated series. Um, soon and I think that's very YA so there's still some YA that I'll read but this is like a 15 16 year old princess and it's that long and it's not part of a series mm -mm. I, don't, I don't like reading short books that aren't part of a series surprise me is by Sophie Kinsella and I've seen a lot of books of, that she does on YouTube and on TikTok I think it's about a marriage that's close to failing but it doesn't fail I might pick this up actually on Kindle later on let me make a note of that 
I can get it on the library app for free. So we're going to do that. I picked up this around Valentine's Day. It's called Anna Karenina by Leah Tolstoy. I picked it up because it was on the table for Valentine's Day. It was saying it was a romance. But then I opened it. It's a huge. It's like 700 pages. 800 pages. 800 pages. The only book getting 800 pages read out of me is the Bible. <laughs> I read just a few short lines. And it's written in a way that somebody sophisticated needs to read this. I have issues with my, see, I have issues with my vocabulary and stuff. And I, I'm a slow reader anyway because I'm caught, my brain is everywhere. So I'll read a paragraph, then I'll be everywhere, and then I'll read another paragraph, be everywhere. That's why I do so well with audiobooks while I'm on the treadmill and stuff. I think it's going to be too sophisticated for me. So it is relatively new, and I just bought it a few months ago, but I'm going to go ahead and get rid of it because it is intimidating. And if I'm being honest, I don't think I'll pick it up. Hearts of Fire, I think probably every Christian and their mom has probably read this. Billy Graham book about angels. I only got halfway through it, and I just didn't read it anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this. And also, somebody picked this up for me, and I can't remember who, but they also got it from a case for 25 cents. It's by John Hagee, Four Blood Moons. I've never read it. I'm not interested in reading it, so I'm going to get rid of that too. 15 books on. I would consider rebooting my laundry as just putting a load in the washer or transferring a load from the washer to the dryer. But now what it looks like to me is finishing the load I started. Finishing completely like hanging up, folding, and putting away the clothes it's I started. It's one of my kiddos jobs today to put all that stuff away. Which helps me out a lot because I'm already running 11 minutes late on getting dinner started at 6.11. So we're going to start the Big Mac Sloppy Joes now. We're both going to learn how to do this because I've never made it before. I will link the recipe that I'm going by down below in the description box in case you guys want to be taught by a professional how to do this. Because as of right now, welcome to my pretend cooking show. Let's get on it. Back on it. I found this recipe on Pinterest and I will be sure to link the Pinterest recipe down below in the description box. It was super good. I didn't like it as much as the kids and Shane, but I'm not like a huge fan of Big Macs. I'll eat one. But they're not my go-to all the time. I grounded up some ground beef and chopped up, finally chopped up, a fourth cup of pickles and half of a white onion. I didn't add my pickles and my white onion into my ground beef until it was almost done, though. While cooking, I've been purposely going back and forth on different tasks to try to teach myself how to multitask because I'm not very good at that. And if I can teach myself how to do it, I know I can thrive in it. It's just getting myself to that point where I can successfully go in between things and not burn something or, you know, accidentally set the stove on fire you know so with my potato wedges I always make these but I always change up the seasonings sometimes I'll do a little onion powder steak seasoning salt and pepper sometimes I'll give it a twang and do lemon pepper it just depends on what we're feeling this night we did onion powder and steak seasoning my ground beef was almost done so I put in the half an onion and the fourth a cup of chopped pickles and just let that simmer for a little bit so that it could cook together I didn't want to burn it so I just put it on low and let it simmer for a little bit while that was simmering though I got started on the mac sauce and I'm going to name off the ingredients but like I said the actual recipe will be linked down below so if you need to refer back to like the ingredients if you want to make this it'll all be in that recipe one cup of mayonnaise a fourth a cup of french dressing two tablespoons spoons of sweet relish 
one tablespoon of ketchup, one teaspoon of white vinegar, a fourth a teaspoon of onion powder, and an eighth a teaspoon of salt. Let me just tell you, I had no idea what half of these ingredients were. <laughs> no, I really didn't know what relish even looked like because <laughs> I never have eaten relish in my life. No ma'am, no ham, no turkey. Something about it just like turned me off. I cannot even look at it without gagging. So to find out that it was in a Big Mac like sauce recipe was a little interesting because I'm wondering if McDonald's puts relish in their Big Mac sauce. I don't know. This sauce was very similar to the Big Mac sauce. I'm talking almost identical. There was just a little bit of a difference and it was kind of like a homemade taste difference. There was not a big difference at all. Once I got the sauce done, I went ahead and mixed a majority of it into my ground beef, but then I kept some on the side. So when I went to assemble the Big Macs, I could put some on the bun. The cool thing about that Pinterest recipe is it gives you like a step-by-step -step on how to assemble a Big Mac, which I'm grateful for. Cause your girl worked a whole three days at McDonald's one time and I ain't never assembled a Big Mac in my life. So I needed that step-by-step -step instruction. <laughs> First off, I'm gonna tell you, presentation is awesome. It looks delicious. It's a little bit different. I like tweaked it up a little okay. bit. Okay, I'm down, I'm down for a little bit different. You even have the middle bun. Yeah. Okay, we're ready? All right, we're ready. Okay. Is it good? Okay. Nice, <laughs> good. What is that? You did that in there. I this did it sloppy joe style. So like, that way the, oh, the, the sauce could be inside the meat. <laughs> the happy dance. <laughs> 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10? 10 out of 10. In the evenings after dinner is when I try to get my 15 to 20 minutes of movement in on my up and moving days. On my editing days where I'm editing for several hours, I try to get 45 minutes to an hour. It's usually around the 45 to 50 minute mark, but I try to get movement in every day nonetheless. To ease my pain before this night is over, I will guide you home. Sometimes I do my exercising before I do the dishes. Sometimes I do the dishes before I get my exercising done, but I get both of them done regardless, whatever day it is. So this day I decided to do my movement before I did the dishes just cause I felt like it, but it changes back and forth every day. It's not, I'm not on a strict minute to minute schedule. If I was, it wouldn't be sustainable to me and I would fall off the wagon for sure. So I just do it how I feel. If I feel like doing exercise, before I do my dishes, then I'll do that. As long as the dishes get done, it doesn't really matter to me. So on this night, I decided to do the dishes after I got done exercising.
Once I get done with the dishes, I'm gonna quickly wipe down the countertops and then I'm gonna spend 15 minutes on a hot spot. A hot spot is something that Fly Lady calls an area in your home where things just gravitate towards it. Like mine is my kitchen table and my tall island in front of me here. Those are my hot spots. It is such a pain in the butt to try to keep those clear because everything ends up on there. So I'm gonna take 15 minutes in my evening to kind of clear out somewhere that's gathered a lot of clutter throughout the day. It happens to be my table today, which is usually is most days. Another week, another day, another hour since You went away and so cliche you didn't say goodbye I've been waiting for so long Still debating what went wrong All by myself You pulled away, you couldn't say what we were struggling with it's one of us, it's obvious, but who's to really blame? There's an aching in my heart, all the questions that I've got Are keeping me up at dream that I would figure out that there are things that kind of bring it to a screeching stop y'all no my hamper is clear I'm throwing that in there it's the first thing in there what my hamper's never clear and now it just has a dish towel that I used today in it that's that's wild I'm going to refill this onion powder before I forget and then I need to get on to the rest of my evening routine my zone for this week was the laundry room. The only thing left I really need to do in there because I mop those floors whenever I mop my, my kitchen floors because they're basically one. Basically, it's completely done because I mop those floor when it, floors whenever I mop the kitchen floors because they kind of go together. So all I would have to do in there is wipe down the washer and dryer and get on the inside of it. And I can't get on the inside of it right now because it's going. It's got my last load of laundry in it. So I think I'll probably just keep that for tomorrow. It's just a quick wipe down. I can at least wipe down the outside of it, but on the inside I need to take that piece out and clean it, but I can't do it while it's going. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that so I can be finished, basically finished with that zone and move on to our new zone tomorrow. You just gotta play your part And it will turn out all Fly Lady routine she talks about at the end of the day you need to set up your launch pad for the next day and usually that would mean like your keys your purse and stuff like that but because I don't leave the home 
most days of the week, usually three days out of the week, I don't have to leave the home. So I usually spend this time on the homeschooling cart because Shane makes sure that his keys and his wallet and his everything is where it needs to be. So I stop at the homeschooling cart and I tidy it up a little bit and just like get it all put together because the homeschooling cart is the first stop in my day. As soon as my feet hit the floor, I'm in that homeschooling cart area getting everything prepared for the school day. That is my first stop in the entire day. Right after I leave the bathroom, the toilet's my first stop. <laughs> but right after I leave the toilet, my homeschooling car, I'm going over here and I'm checking out what the lesson plan says, what we're going to do today. Um, if there's anything left I need to grade from the prior day, anything like that. That's what I do before I do anything else. So this is the area in my home that I consider the launch pad. But for people who go outside of the home or work outside of the home, then theirs would be like probably like a bedside table or something. Wherever you keep all your stuff, entryway table, whatever, that's what your launch pad would be. Mine happens to be the homeschool cart because my days revolve around homeschooling. <laughs> I set my clothes out for the next day. This is something I don't always do. I actually didn't do it the night before this. Y'all saw me picking out my clothes at the beginning of this video. So I don't always get to do that, but I try to. I have been making sure I wind down by washing my face, brushing and flossing my teeth, combing my hair. I've been combing my hair since I dyed it because it did take so much damage. I don't want it to knot up and me lose more hair than I already did while bleaching it. So I've been combing through my hair every single night. I don't wash my hair every single night. I only wash my hair once a week and that's because I've trained my hair to do really well by once a week washings by accident nonetheless <laughs> but i trained it to do that so that works out in my favor now so i just like do my self-care routine and make sure that i'm not neglecting myself that's a very hard thing for me because i'm an all-in or all-out person and if i'm all in in my home and in my kids and my husband and stuff i forget about me i i can't it's hard to multitask while cooking it's hard to multitask while cleaning for me but all that aside, it's hard to multitask in life in general. I mean, it really is. So I'm trying to keep this routine going so I don't forget to take care of me because I have for so many years. I let myself go, y'all. Y'all ever heard that song, country song? She let herself go on a singles cruise to Vegas once and to Honolulu. <laughs> Thank y'all for hanging out with me. I hope y'all have a blessed morning, even not whatever it is, or wherever you're at. Know that I love you, but Jesus loves you more. I'll see y'all later. She let herself go out the bathroom door. Turned off the light and went to bed for sure. Let herself go.